嘅医学研讨会，有请我哋会议嘉宾主持澳门镜会医院副院长何鸿新博士医疗拓展基金会信托委员霍文信医生为我哋主持，同时亦都有请我哋两位讲者，分别系香港中文大学妇产科学系讲座教授及妇产科学系主任钟国恒教授，同埋香港中文大学儿科学系讲座教授及儿科学系主任。伍百祥教授，好，霍文信医生交俾你啦。好，誒、呃，多謝大會主持。時間關係咧，我都唔再多講或者介紹啦。頭先主席都介紹咗，不過我睇翻兩位教授嘅嘅簡介咧，當中咧，除咗佢哋喺佢哋嘅本科裏邊係有誒、呃、優越嘅成就之外咧，佢哋喺大學方面啊。誒教學啊、誒研究啊，都係有誒驕人嘅成就。更加就喺社會方面，佢哋都有好大嘅誒誒熱心同埋貢獻嘅。所以誒，我啊實在係好榮幸，同埋即係係好謙卑喺兩位誒教授嘅中間可以一齊去分享。咁我諗首先就我哋誒先請阿鍾國恆教授咧，就誒。解誒講佢今日嘅主題咧，就係講一般婦科疾病處理嘅新進展。誒，請大家用掌聲歡迎。誒 ，Good afternoon. I cannot speak in Cantonese. If I tried, you will be laughing all during the lecture. So,、um, I was given the topic of advances in management of common gynecological. Conditions, and with your permission, I will change the topic to a little bit.、Uh, management of these conditions. What has changed in the last 20 years? I chose 20 years because it's a long enough period to observe changes, and it is also the period that I have been in Hong Kong. I came to Hong Kong to work 20 years ago. I will divide the talk into three parts. What has changed in treatment? What has not changed, or not changed much, and most importantly, perhaps, what should change? Well, what has changed? Well, there are a number of conditions which has changed dramatically. At least, if you are looking at the ideal situation, the management of miscarriage has changed dramatically. If there is the will to do it, very common problem of menorrhagia has changed a great deal. Menopause, the way we look at menopause,、uh, not the least of which is osteoporosis, has also changed quite a lot. The steady improvement of laparoscopic surgery has、uh, yielded dramatic results if it concerns the woman herself. And indeed, urinary incontinence, there have been very substantial changes there. I will not talk much about.、Uh, Medical abortion here, but if you put medical abortion together with the management of miscarriage, I think the last、uh, 10 or 15 years has been dramatic in the sense that、um, the use of surgery, dilatation and curettage, if you are determined enough, you can reduce the number of DNC by probably 90 to 95 percent. When I came to Prince of Wales Hospital 20 years ago. Prince of Wales Hospital used to do approximately 1,000、uh, DNC a year.、Uh, that number last year has been reduced to approximately 250,、uh, leaving a lot of theatre time for our orthopaedic、uh, colleagues. So, the most important change in miscarriage is that conservative management, doing nothing, allowing the woman to have her miscarriage. Is safe, but it must be supervised. In other words, you just can't send her away and do nothing. You must follow her up and make sure she doesn't run into trouble. And、um, and you can save a great deal of money there、um, in terms of hospital costs. The next area is menorrhagia.、Um, when I was training in gynaecology in Australia, every week we would be doing many hysterectomies. Every week. Uh, probably two days a week, you do nothing but hysterectomies because women were complaining of menorrhagia. In the last 20 years, there have been 
some real advances. Uh, the one that <coughs> the first picture is that of a IUCD with uh, progestogen. Uh, this, if used properly, can reduce hysterectomy because of menorrhagia by 90-95%. But you need to be patient. The patient needs to be patient and yeah, together you can achieve this. The other method is endometrial ablation. If the endometrial is the main fault, the main problem, and you try to find ways of destroying the endometrium, there are many, many less invasive ways to do it now. Hot water, ultrasound, heat, electricity, laser, but they all share a common feature, and that is you try and destroy the endometrium without having to take out the uterus. Even the fibroids, when I was training, we used to say, oh, fibroids can turn malignant because you can have osteosarcoma, uh, not osteosarcoma, <laughs> a sarcoma of the uterus. However, we now know Fibroids almost never turn malignant. Um, I think the risk is less than one in 10,000. And if that risk is, a risk of what, less than one in 10,000 is, medically speaking, not worth considering. Now, fibroids, <coughs> you can manage them more conservative these days, once again, without taking out the uterus. As you know, if you have symptoms related to fibroids, such as menorrhagia, if they have significantly uh, sized fibroids, medical treatment is unlikely to, to be successful. And the picture you see here is a procedure called uterine artery embolization, where literally you cannulate the uterine arteries, even the feeder arteries to the fibroid, and you block it. And the fibroid then uh, shrinks un under the influence of uh, greatly reduced perfusion. And this has real potential and has been dramatically successful in certain centers. But uh, um, its real role remains to be totally defined yet. The other big area where there has been a dramatic change is the menopause. Once again, when I came to Hong Kong 20 years ago, it used to be taught that any woman going into the menopause should receive counseling for hormone therapy. However, fortunately for Hong Kong, the women of Hong Kong, I, I presume a class was the same, were smarter than the doctors. They did not take this advice. And, as, and hormone therapy as a routine for women, menopausal women in Hong Kong remain persistently low. Indeed, the women were right and the doctors were wrong. So, how do we use hormones uh, in the menopause? Well, some women uh, uh, get uh, very symptomatic with hot flushes and sweats, and certainly hormone therapy is very, very effective to reduce this. Now, if you are trying to use hormone therapy long term, um, for example, for the prevention of osteoporosis for especially high-risk uh, patients, um, you should probably start early rather than late. The reason is because if you start late, the woman has already developed all her cardiovascular uh, morbidities or her risk factors, and you are likely to do more harm than good. And we learned that in a large American trial study that turn all our conventional wisdom around, and that is, if you give hormone therapy to prevent uh, cardiovascular disease, as was commonly thought the case, you actually do more harm than actually cause more death. The other area which I think has been very exciting to uh, witness in the last 20 years has been endoscopic surgery. On the left, uh, is the treatment of an ectopic pregnancy, and on the right, an ovarian cyst. At Prince of Wales today, uh, almost all ectopic pregnancies are treated laparoscopically, 
And women can go home the next day or even the same day. Ovarian cysts, they can go home that afternoon. But uh, our patients want to rest a little bit more, but certainly they go home the next day. Both these conditions, 20 years ago, were commonly treated with laparotomy, and laparotomy usually requires three or four days in hospital. I think that has been a dramatic change. The cure rate, the effectiveness, is the same. At the moment, at Prince of Wales, there are three departments that are grappling with the role of robotic surgery. Uh, not because it is not a good technology, but it is being able to afford it. At the moment, uh, the government is considering supporting robotic surgery. It is extremely expensive. Um, there are certain conditions, for example, radical prostatectomy, um, but where the place is well established. However, in gynecology, uh, it remains to be totally and convincingly evaluated. Urinary incontinence is very, very common. 30, 40 years ago, if you went to medical school in Australia or United Kingdom or United States, you were told that Chinese women did not have urinary incontinence. Um, well, one of the research that I'm most proud of when I came to Hong Kong was I actually asked Chinese women in Hong Kong whether they had urinary incontinence. And, well, the result was they had urinary incontinence just as commonly as Western people. Now, 20 years ago, if you wanted your urinary incontinence cured surgically, you usually have a procedure which involves uh, incision uh, suprapubically, and then you enter the retropubic space, and then you have a sling procedure of some sort. It was a messy operation. Very often, there's a lot of bleeding, right? And uh, the complications were reasonably uh, common. These days, if you know how to put in these tapes, it doesn't really matter, TVT, TOT, whatever, and they are in becoming increasingly better developed. I have seen one of my med uh, senior medical officers put one in in minutes. The most important thing is the thing on your right, the 15-minute job, is just as effective, if not more effective, than the previous surgery. This is, for me anyway, the, probably the uh, most exciting advance in gynecology in the last uh, 20, 30 years, and of course that is HPV vaccination. We have a vaccine today, if properly used and properly supported, at the moment it's very, very expensive, uh, and it is not provided free by the government uh, in Hong Kong. I'm not sure about Macau, but if it isn't, you, you probably should ask the foundation for, to do it, because we have the potential to reduce deaths from cervical cancer, uh, nasopharyngeal cancer, uh, you know, carcinoma of the rectum, all of which is causally related to uh, HPV uh, infection and persistence, we have the potential to eliminate a large chunk of these cancer deaths. In Hong Kong, we have a very good, by most standards, uh, psychological screening if the women are willing. However, I think everybody will agree, in this, in this room will agree, that a cytological-based pap smear screening program in China is impractical. It is very, very highly uh, op operator-dependent. It, it requires a huge organization, it requires a huge uh, backup services in terms of colposcopy. But vaccination, and the Chinese, the Ch uh, mainland Chinese have a very, very strong and excellent tradition in vaccination, this can be done. If every young girl in, in the China gets vaccinated <clears throat> before her sexual debut, you are looking at 
thousands, tens of thousands of lives saved a year. What has not changed? What has not really gone that far, despite some of the exotic topics? And, well, assisted reproductive techniques, as you all know, originated with animals. The veterinary surgeon started it first. And of course, it became IVF. And um, I will go into why I think it hasn't really progressed that much. In matters of gynecological oncology, it hasn't changed much either. Psychological issues, gynecologists are no better at dealing with them now, I think, than they were 20 years ago. Contraception, I don't think, has changed that much. Infections, epidemiology, if anything, is getting worse. And there has been a singular lack of progress in endometriosis. I think the most important lesson in the last 20 years with assisted reproductive technology is that age is the most important factor. If you are more than 40, you can try all the advanced technology. Your chances of getting pregnant are no better than doing nothing. I will repeat, if you are over 40, right, you can try all the high tech costing many, many tens of thousands of dollars, your chances of getting pregnant, with the singular exception of tubal disease, and most of them are not tubal disease these days, it's no better than doing nothing. There have been incremental improvements such as egg freezing, pre-implantation diagnosis, and most importantly, regulation of what you do, because you can imagine reproductive technology has a lot of gray ethical issues and regulation by government is very important because there are some uh, unsavory practices. Right. Oncology, in terms of treatment, there really has been no advance. The kind of five-year survival rate that were achieved 20 years ago is still the five-year survival rate now. There have been some small improvements. Taxol, very expensive, give you a few more months of life. Trophoblastic disease, uh, which is becoming less and less common, in, they were already getting excellent results 20 years ago. HPV uh, vaccine I've talked about. HPV vaccine, I think, in the future will replace cytological screening. At the moment, they haven't found way to cheaply industrialize the process. But cytological screening, pap smears, is an extremely intensive, labor-intensive uh, program. And it is my hope, it's my prediction, that it will be replaced by HPV-based screening. The most important thing about contraception is, is the people who use them, and most people don't use them well, and they get pregnant. 50% of women presenting for antenatal care in Hong Kong, one in two, one in two, right, presenting for antenatal care, that means they want to keep this baby, right, have had an abortion, 50%. Now, contraception availability in Hong Kong is very, very uh, easy. Access is excellent. We have made no progress in endometriosis, right? We may have slightly better surgery. We have a few more, more interesting drugs, but we still don't know why it occurs, and we still have no better way of treating the pain, right? Zilch, 20 years, no progress. Psychological issues I won't go into, but we are no better at dealing with them now than we were 20 years ago. Many a time, if you're a gynecologist, I know you must feel that you are a surrogate psychiatrist. The infection situation is steadily getting worse. Right? We know there is a huge undetected population of HIV-positive uh, people in China. Uh, so, but it's probably not being dealt with as well as it should be. 
HPV has always been around, and if the vaccination program is given its proper support, we will probably over most of it. Syphilis and chlamydia is skyrocketing in China. So, what needs to change? I, what needs to change most? Well, in fact, it's not the technology that needs to change in gynecology. It's simple things like sex education, contraception, the user, health education, holistic care. Sex is a part of life. People are having sex younger and younger. And the, the technology to prevent pregnancy, to prevent your, you, know, you stop yourself from getting an infection, all those things are already there. The technology is there. The people's will and willingness to do it may not be. I'm a strong uh, proponent of health education because knowledge empowers. Right? Prevention is better and lifestyle is probably more important modifications than a lot of the exotic treatments. Now, the first thing I noticed 20 years ago when I came to Hong Kong is I do not have to operate on many, many obese women, right? Uh, certainly in Australia, you had to. I haven't quite operated on a Hong Kong woman that size yet. But on Monday, on Monday, a few days ago, I operated on a woman with a BMI of 34. Now, that's a new experience for me in Hong Kong. So it's coming. So thank you very much. Your attention. Thank you, Professor Zhong. Uh, that was a very enlightening talk, uh, although very, uh, very to the point and comprehensive, but easy to understand. Um, there will be questions from the floor. Uh, may I first start uh, by asking Professor Zhong, you mentioned about uh, two things early on about, uh, firstly, medical abortion. Um, now, do you have a program that f um, follow the treatment in terms of education and uh, prevention uh, uh, with usage of the medication? And, and second question is, uh, you mentioned about a common condition about uterine fibroid and non-surgical therapy. Now, um, I've heard that there are, uh, with the embolization, there are actually quite a, um, quite a significant morbidity. I don't know if it's true. And how does it compare with other uh, non-surgical treatment that currently are offered, such as focus ultrasound. Yeah. Uh, in terms of prevention of uh, unwanted pregnancy, um, the, the function is mainly taken by the uh, education people. The, 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 in terms of uh, direct intervention in the community, probably is not practical. So we don't have a program for this, uh, the prevention of unwanted pregnancy. But I think probably the most important issue is the, um, if you're going to prevent unwanted uh, uh, pregnancy, the, the process has to start before the, uh, the girls enter high school. Uh, I have three daughters, and uh, they all went to high school in Australia. And they were taught the year before they enter high school how to put on a condom at school when they were 11. Okay, so that may or may not be acceptable for uh, many. In terms of fibroids, yes, a lot of these new therapies are still to be fully evaluated. Focus ultrasound um, is, in my opinion, not looking very good. Uterine artery embolization seems to be looking better as more experience accumulates. But you have to compare with the alternative, which is usually open surgery, because you, uh, the fibroids that we operate on here not, are not small. They are the size of, or bigger than tennis balls sometimes, basketballs. 
So uh, they do have their morbidity, but the morbidity of conventional surgery is also very high. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I would like to ask a question about the hormone replacement treatment. You mentioned about the hormone replace, replacement treatment will increasing the cardio uh, complication. Uh, I heard this uh, most probably in the uh, Western country, but uh, do you have any information about the Asian uh, women they use the hormone replacement treatment? Because in Hong Kong, uh, less people they they will use, I think in Macau also the same situation. But uh, is it the same uh, instance of the cardio complication occur? No, the, um, to answer that question, you need to do a studies of the similar size to the United States one. Or oh, in fact, you need to do a bigger study because cardiovascular disease in uh, Hong Kong and Macau is less common. So to be able to tell a difference, you will need to do an even bigger study and nobody has the energy to do this um, and and um, there is no convincing well there, there's no study that will give you the answer in a definitive way but uh, and also if you want to recruit them uh, in Hong Kong at the moment hormone therapy is used by approximately two percent of women menopausal women um, so no there's no data and yes, it's, uh, the epidemiology in Asia is likely to be different because heart disease is less common. But the, uh, the studies that have been done, the big ones, un uh, unfortunately show that um, the health benefits from hormone therapy is very marginal. Okay. 如果冇其他問題嘅，我哋再次用掌聲去多謝鐘教授。